The counterexample is in New Guinea, traditionally, all conversations were face to face. It means that they're used to understanding the speech, they're understanding the facial expression, they're understanding the body language. The result is that New Guinea children, by the age of five, they are skilled negotiators. American kids, they don't learn that because they don't have the constant face-to-face -face communication. I liked all these books. And I loved your latest. You always managed to both create something that a lot of people can read, but also is academically profound and uh, contribution to the understanding. And I actually found it pretty hopeful that you gave examples where countries had gotten through uh, their, their problems. I ended up cautiously optimistic in the last 40 years. The world has acted to solve really difficult problems such as agreement about getting chlorofluorocarbons out of the atmosphere, agreement about oil tankers on the high seas, that they be double hulled agreement to get rid of smallpox, I mean, to, to get the last case of small, smallpox. Yeah. <laughs> so those are examples of successful world negotiations to solve difficult problems, which made me finally cautiously optimistic that the world could solve the other big problems that we're facing now. In the United States, talk about polarization. It seems to me that the fundamental reasons for polarization are the decline in face-to-face -face communication in the United States, but we're not going to give up computers and cell phones, and the weak social ties in the United States related to the fact that we're a big country, but the country is not going to shrink. Twenty years ago, I would have been optimistic that we were moving away from mass communication, you know, radio and TV, that anybody can publish. As a technologist, you know, we all thought we were bringing this thing that would, would help democracy. Right at the moment, it feels like it's allowed people to separate into their own bubble. That's a bit of a surprise without, you know, just going backwards. How do we make there be a sort of common front page or a common set of facts? The counterexample is in New Guinea, traditionally, all conversations were face to face. It means that they're used to understanding the speech, they're understanding the facial expression, they're understanding the body language. The result is that New Guinea children, by the age of five, they are skilled negotiators. American kids, they don't learn that because they don't have the constant face-to-face -face communication. Do you see a way we can back away from the polarization that we're seeing? The only thing that I can see is to, to be aware of the problem and to realize that we, we have to make an effort to reduce the polarization both at the social and political level. I hope everybody checks out the upheaval. It's super educational and makes us think about how we solve some very important problems.